Update 1 on Tropical Storm Katarim, which is a late season storm for the Australian region now. Located at 9.5 degrees south, 90.1 degrees east, it recently emerged in this particular basin from the southwest Indian Ocean. So control has been shifted over to the Baru Meteorology from Mateo, France. It's got winds of 50 miles an hour and a pressure of 994 millibars. It's moving to the south at 13 miles an hour and no CDPS is in place at this time due to the fact that no landfall is projected. Of course, CDPS stands for Cyclone Destruction Potential Scale, and given the fact that it is not expected to hit anywhere anytime soon, given how far out to sea it is, this leaves there to be no CDPS stage, given the fact that there is no kind of land expected to get hit. It's about as out to a sea of a storm you can possibly get this time of year. Here it is on the map. You can see pretty much the nearest area is uh, quite a bit away, pretty much Indonesia. As of right now, it's got tropical storm force winds extending 90 nautical miles to the northern quadrants, 120 to the southwest, and none in the southeastern quadrants. It's a far distance away from pretty much anywhere, with Jakarta being the nearest city, 1,140 miles away, 1,850 miles away from Carnarvon, 2,240 from Perth, 2,300 from Mauritius, and 2,440 away from Reunion. That's 1,840 kilometers away from Jakarta, 2,980 from Carnarvon, 3,360 from Perth, 3,710 from Mauritius, and 3,930 kilometers away from Reunion. Of course, this isn't really going to matter in the grand scheme of things, as Karim is going to be staying out to sea. Here it is on the intensity estimate side of things. We have it at 50 miles an hour, which is following the JTWC and Baru of Meteorology at this time. ATMS has it at 60, and SACCON and ADT have it at 65 miles an hour. This is the latest cone from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, which is expected to keep Karim uh, at a high-end tropical storm for its peak before weakening as it engages into cooler waters uh, and turns to the southeast, but either way, it's not going to be a land threat at all. And this is the steady surface temperatures, of course, as it progresses southwards, it's going to be encountering cooler sea surface temperatures, but for the time being, it's around 28 degrees Celsius for now. Uh, that's going to be dropping to about 24 to 25 by the day 5 point uh, from what I am seeing here. And then of course you can see the intensity got as much of it has it going up to 65 to 70 miles an hour. Wind shear is going to be dramatically skyrocketing on the 10th and 11th. Sea surface temperatures will continue to drop and mid-level relative humidity will also continue to drop as well. So of course that's going to make it a much more hostile environment for Karim to thrive in. This is the latest satellite imagery. You can see it's getting its act together as it continues to uh, develop more and more convection. Um, probably not going to be anything spectacular given the fact that it is May and we typically don't see stuff going on uh, much in the southern hemisphere, but it is interesting to note. Um, it is pretty much the ending of the southwestern Indian Ocean and Australian region cyclone seasons. Of course, that's not the most important cyclone as we're dealing with other issues with 2B, but that will be covered in a bit in another update. We'll keep you posted on these two storms as they continue to develop and strengthen over the course of the next few days.